four. When you get it, say amen. Hallelujah. I didn't hear nobody say amen. You got it? All right. I'm going to read into your hearing. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy. And that were lame were healed. Somebody say amen. amen. And there was a great joy in the city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. He used sorcery. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he was himself some great one. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. To him they had regard, caused that the long time he had been bewitching the people with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women, and Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which, he would done, which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down, prayed for them that they may, might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they which were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their, their hands upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. But when Simon saw through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, which that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God might be purchased with money. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray that you... Speak to us through your word. Give us, O oh God, uh, encouragement and help us to understand that your word is through which we must live. We pray, Father, that you energize us through your word, empower us through your word, keep us in your word, cause us to be effective in your word. We pray, Father, that you will continue to carry us through every trial, every test every tribulation that comes upon us. We pray that you anoint my voice. We pray that you give your people an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a will to do. Speak to us, Father, and we will be fed in your mighty precious name. Somebody said, amen. amen. This is a, a, the most powerful setting uh, to me that I find in this particular chapter because when uh, the power was falling upon the people through their belief and through their faith that one that was practicing sorcery, I want you to know that that spirit is prevalent in the world today. 
and that you cannot underestimate the power that comes through divination. And when I say divination, I'm not speaking of the, the true divine that comes from the Most High, but I'm speaking of the thing that happens to uh, the people that believe in the dark craft. The scripture talks about Simon. He was a sorcerer, and he had the whole city bewitched and up under his spell. What are you talking about, Bishop Coleman? Well, I'm trying to let you see that everything that seems spiritual is not necessarily so. The true spirit of the Most High would challenge you to live correctly, to live right according to his word. It would challenge you to put down things that uh, cause you hurt, harm, and pain. It would challenge you to live according to all of the word, not just a portion of it, but all of it. It would cause you to be there for your family, be there for your wife, and only her, and not have someone on the side. It would cause you to be a true person, honest person, a person that loves the Most High. One that's not overcharged with greed. One that's not covetous, but one that uh, seek the face and to do the thing that is right. So we see the setting in the scripture where Philip started preaching in Samaria. And he preached so hard and so strong that uh, the men began to believe. And Simon the sorcerer, which had the whole town bewitched, he believed also. And he was baptized. I want you to know that one thing that you cannot give yourself over to is the dark crap. And if you do, you better hurry up and try to repent and get back in the face of the Most High. That's one of the most hardest things to get out of. You have some of the uh, rappers that have sold themselves over to that spirit and they end up getting a lot of money. <clears throat> Because they have made a pact with the enemy, made a pact with the devil. Sold their soul. I know you all heard that, but I want you to know there is some truth to that. When a person sells their soul, the devil is not so quick and easy to let that person go. Some of you all, young people, you've probably been noticing. Many rappers have been dying lately. Anybody notice that lately? A lot of them have been dying and dying strange and not natural causes. Many of them are not dying of natural causes because the enemy is making them uh, come due on that payment for selling their soul for fame and fortune. I want you to know that money is to be used. Money is to be used for you to sustain your life. It's not to be used to, to be so flamboyant and have all of the 24-inch uh, the rims and all the half-naked women dancing around you. That's not what it's for. It's for you to use and to utilize in your life that your life may be more productive toward holiness and righteousness. You got to do the thing with the money that promote a holy and a sanctified life. Not to go over in to spill over into those evil things. The Bible said it is hard for a rich man to be saved. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a person with riches to be saved. I wonder why I said that. Because many times when people begin to get loads and loads of money, it turns their heart from the most high. So this is what happened to Simon. Simon had the whole town and the whole city bewitched. And when he heard the man of God preaching, he desired, and in the Bible said, and he believed. That's what the scripture said. And he was baptized. But I don't see anywhere where he received the Holy Ghost. And uh, as the story goes on, when, when John and Peter came on the scene, they were laying hands on people, and the people were receiving the power and the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Now you tell me, how can you tell if a person received the Holy Ghost by someone else laying their hands on them? Can you answer that question for me? How can you tell? Something had to happen for him to know that these people received the power and the gift of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, he wanted to purchase it. Come on, give him praise. We're not going to focus so much on uh, what the sign was. We'll get to that later. But he saw that this power was given by laying on hands, people received the gift of the Holy Ghost, so he wanted to offer money for it. So his heart was not totally right. That's why many times, people of God, we have to understand that your life is better uh, is measured by how you use your money. The Lord measures your heart. If you got a wicked heart, the more money you get, the more wicked you're going to be. Somebody say amen. amen. If you got a wicked heart, when you get thousands and thousands and millions and millions of dollars, it's going to magnify what's on the inside of your heart. That's why I gave you that brief testimony to, to let you know that you must keep your heart pure and clean all the way through so that you will be adequate and sufficient for him to utilize in the kingdom. So we see Simon had not fully repented because he was hooked on having the power. If he had the whole city be which he was already rich. That's why I'm telling the people, don't get uplifted because you see a person with thousands and thousands of people in their congregation. Because Christ, he... he cut the thing down and said, except you uh, eat and drink of my blood, you would not have part with me. And many people left him. The 12 were left. He turned to them and said, will you also go? They say, where, where can we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So don't be misconstrued because of the crowd, because many times the crowd dwindles off. We see that Simon fell in his faith because he wanted to purchase the spirit, the power of the spirit. Now, let's, let me look at it and see what, what happened. It says, verse 14, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria received the word of God, they uh, sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed on them and they, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw through the land of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hands be may receive the Holy Ghost, that he may receive the Holy Ghost when I lay hands on him. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't buy this with money. This is worth more than money. But this is what I want you to hear. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, on this day, wickedness. On this thy wickedness. So in other words, the man of God was able to look at him and detect that you are unrepentant. Even though you have been baptized, you have not repented. So many times, people, that's the first thing that we elaborate on before you go down in the water you need to repent what is that come godly sorrow of all of your sins that they may be washed away you got to die to your sin Simon had not died to his sin so he thought that he can purchase it he thought he could forward his lifestyle even after receiving the word 
But the man of God didn't allow that. He said, repent therefore of this thy wickedness. And pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, pray ye to the Lord for me. I think I talked about that last week. Why come he didn't pray? He had all the people that uh, were following him, but he couldn't pray. Well, why don't you pray? Why don't you repent right now? But he said, pray for me. You got to learn how to pray yourself. You got to learn how to get in touch with him for yourself because you don't know at any given moment when you're going to have to call on him. The pastor might not be anywhere around. You might not be able to find him. Because I believe in prayer. But you need to pray yourself. You need to develop a prayer life for yourself. One that's fervent. The scripture tells us the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Avail as much. So he said, pray for me. Uh, pray to the Lord for me. That one of these, that none of these things which thou hast spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified, preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem, and preached the gospel in many villages of Samaria. So we see that here this man, been baptized, and supposed to be on his way to salvation, but he still got iniquity in his heart. People of God, we are in a, a, an important position, an important place right now. Because the prayers of the righteous have to be made at this time. We have to pray fervently for our young people because many of them are so isolated from uh, uh, the powers of the, the Most High until they can't seem to connect to what uh, the spirituality that they need. This is your lifeline, your real, true lifeline. Life is more than just living, eating and drinking, having a good time. You need a spiritual connection with the Most High. I don't hear nobody. You need to be connected up on the inside so that your life will be governed enough for him to find favor in you, to utilize you so you can be effective in others, that other men and, and women may see something in your lifestyle that they may be saved. But Simon the sorcerer, even though he had this power, now let me talk about that. You can't underestimate the power uh, that these people use. Some of these people are Freemasons. Some of these big time preachers are, are uh, members of the Freemasonry. And that's a type of secrecy. And they have made oaths, you know, vows before these people. And a certain kind of power have been downloaded to them on the dark side. You find a lot of them, they, they, they have high influence because all of the riches that uh, Satan promised Christ, you remember he told him, if you bow down all these things I will give you. Just bow down and worship me and I'm going to give you all the kingdoms of the world. Well, there is an entity in the world that have made and took that bargain, that offer that was made to them. And many people that are in that circle start looking like they're rising up. All the people in government, most of them men are, are in that line of wickedness like the skull of, and bones. Y'all heard of that? Like the Bilderberg groups. All these people have made vows and, and give them, gave themselves over for the sake of money. And this is where uh, Simon the Sorcerer was in that category. That's why he thought that uh, what these guys are doing, if I could purchase that, then I can take up uh, more provinces. I can have more areas. I can, I can utilize this power. I heard something said about uh, a missionary that went over into Africa and they preached to some people and a witch doctor was over there. And the witch doctor believed and got saved. 
So he saw the witch doctor outside, and he had these instruments that he used to practice his sorcery. He had some galls. Or you know how they have bones and stuff, throw all these things out to, to, to practice the wickedness. And so the evangelist went out and asked him, what are you getting ready to do? He said, I'm getting ready to burn up all this stuff that I use uh, uh, in, in witchcraft. Hoodoo and voodoo. I'm getting ready to burn it up because I'm a believer now. But the evangelist said, don't burn them up. I can use them. I can show them to the people and show them how you've been, show them how you've been uh, converted that you want to get out of it. And I can show them these gorge and show them all these instruments that you have. He said, no, you don't want to use them because they got power. They contain power in them. He said, oh, I don't believe in that stuff. I just want to show them to the man, uh, to the people back home in America and let them experience it. So the witch doctor said, okay, go ahead and take them. So when the man took the, the instruments and all the little things he had that he was getting ready to burn, as they were on their way back in the middle of the night, he heard something shaking and quivering in that bag that he had those things in. He looked in the bag and he saw him moving. Shh. So he took him out and burned him because he did not want to take that cursed thing into the vicinity of wherever he was going. I said that to say this. Some of that stuff is real, but that doesn't mean that it's godly. Witchcraft is real. They actually activate demon spirits. But that doesn't mean that you have to be drawn to it because it's real. There is something that's more real than the demonical spirits. And that's God Almighty. Somebody ought to give him some praise on that. If you want to yield yourself to something, yield yourself to him. Why are people so fascinated with the dark craft? You got many young ladies, young witches these days. Come on, give them praise. And yeah, they, 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 they know how to work that stuff. and Have you cross-eyed, following them. Come on, give God praise. And sit down, sit down, baby. You sit right there. Stay there till I get back. She gone four hours. You still sitting there waiting till she come back. Come on, give God praise. Don't desire that kind of power. Hallelujah. Amen. They, they got all kind of ways that, that they got your mind twisted. I was trying to deal with a, a young man. He wanted to be saved, but I think he was bewitched. Went over his house and trying to talk to him, and he, he wanted to be saved. But after I got through talking, he got ready to go in the house, and the, the woman had to throw a picture of him outside on the, on the ground and broke the, the frame that the picture was in. I said, what's that about? She was trying to work that stuff on him to keep his mind going. They, they bury your drawers in the backyard, you won't be able to leave the house. You got to watch these crazy people. In this crazy world. Come on, give God praise. Cook something for you, for you, and you won't never be straight. That's why we say our blessings over our food. Lord, bless and purify this food. Let every mineral be nourished into our bodies. And don't let nothing and no danger come to me after I eat this food. Come on, give God praise. You can't eat everywhere. Where y'all at? Simon the sorcerer got baptized, but he still was practicing that mess. He said, pray for me. Well, I don't read where he prayed for him. I don't see where he stopped and prayed for him. But a, a strong point here is that even after they were in Samaria, a big revival going on. Philip ended up, the spirit of the Lord spoke to him and took him into a desert place. 
So why are you going to believe all of those people and go to a desert place where it ain't but one person? Come on, give God praise. I'm trying to help somebody today because we're in the last days and, and in this day we're living in some of everything's going on. You got witches that you wouldn't think is witches. Do you mean, you remember uh, King Herod? Uh, he had, he was messing with his brother's wife or something like that and then this young lady was coming out dancing and he said, come on, dance for me. I guess she danced so hard, whatever kind of dance she was doing. He said, I'm going to give you up to a third of my kingdom. Because you dance, this dance you doing, I don't know, he done lost his mind because of whatever kind of dance she doing. Come on, give God praise. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all think I'm just up here just saying something. She danced so uh, until he lost his mind. Whatever, what you want? Whatever you want, you can have it. Then she asked for John the Baptist's head. Give me John the Baptist's head. So th that spirit does not go with the spirit of the Most High. It's against his spirit. So you can't indulge in that. I don't know what kind of dance she did, but it sure messed him up. John the Baptist ended up losing his head. Come on, give God praise. Because this woman danced and, and drove the king out of his mind. Hallelujah. Witchcraft. The dark crowd is rearing up right now. It's getting stronger. So that's why we're trying to let you know. Pray that you got divine protection over your life. Pray over your children. Come on, give them praise. Don't let them bring those little Wicked toys in there. Don't let them bring no Ouija board in your house. That's a doorway to the dark side. Y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all don't think I'm, this stuff is true. If the Lord is true, if there is a God, there is a devil. Come on, give him praise. If there's good, there is bad. Many people are influenced by this stuff that's going on. It's getting thick out here in the world. The world is, you know, they're preparing what, what they're doing. They're trying to desensitize us to death. They want to make death a common thing to where when somebody dies, oh, she sure did, she gone. Oh, Lord. You're hearing about it so many times. So many people are leaving here. They're trying to desensitize you so that when they get to that place where when you don't receive the mark, they're going to put you to death. So death is going to be a common thing. Come on, that's in your Bible. So we got to get close to him. We got to get in a place where we're protected. I'm not fearing uh, all of this stuff out here, but I'm trying to warn uh, those that may be drafted in or pulled in or, uh, with this spirit out here. It's getting thick out here. That's why many young people do not receive. They, don't, they, they are, look like they're allergic to the Lord. Come on, give them praise. They repel. The, 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 the word of God re, is a repellent to them. They, they, they got something in them. They don't want to don't wanna surrender. But, oh, if you surrender, your life will change. I wish I had some help, somebody. Is anybody satisfied living for him? A little louder, please. That's better. That's better. You've got to be satisfied. If you're dissatisfied, you're going to look for other things. If a man becomes dissatisfied in his home, ain't nothing going to be right that his wife is doing. This food don't taste right. Why don't you put on something else? Why, why, why are you looking like that? Come on, girl. Everything is wrong. That's how it gets when you are serving the Lord and you're looking on the other side. Everything becomes wrong with serving him. Why you can't do this? Why you can't do that? Why y'all got to do this? Why are the ushers so mean? Come on, give God praise. 
because you're finding a reason to get out from up under his divine protection. But don't fall for it, people. Don't let yourself get bored with living for him. Can I get some help, somebody? Don't get bored with, with the most high. Don't get bored with him. Don't get bored with your, your husband. Don't get bored with your wife if they saved. Let me put that in there. Because sometimes you got uh, some unsaved husbands. Unsaved wife. I had a friend, he had a wife that slapped him upside his head. He said, man, I can't deal with that, man. She, she slapped me upside my head. I, no, I can't do that. I, I, I dealt with it long enough. But when she slapped me, I couldn't come at her like I wanted to. So I had to walk out. Come on, give God praise. Sometimes you talk about abusive men, you got some abusive women. They'll whoop you up. Wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, come on, baby, come on. We getting ready to throw down. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. You can't hardly do nothing. You sleepy. <laughs> See, pow, 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 come out the air on you. Boom, boom. Beat you up. Because that's what they came up with. They came up in a house where fighting was going on. Come on, give God praise. So now they like to fight. They don't, you ain't hit me, you don't love me. What kind of twisted stuff is that? Well, he don't beat me, so I don't think he love me. You twisted. You twisted up. That's why we have to preach to people and let them know. This spirit of sorcery is prevalent. Simon the sorcerer got baptized, but he still was messed up. We're trying to get you to go all the way down and get everything that's not like him and pull it out. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So Simon, I don't know what happened to him. It looked like to me that, that he was in bad shape because the way the man of God told him, he said, I, I detect in you, you need to repent. Something's wrong with you, man. You, you done got baptized and you still all messed up in your life when we would get in a situation and we might do something you know, when we first got saved we called a pastor and asked him can I kill this roach because you had such a tender heart you didn't even want to kill a roach the Bible said, well you know pastor the Bible said thou should not kill go on kill the roach <laughs> hallelujah now they, they they don't just kill they twist them now they Make sure he did. Come on, give God praise. Your heart get tough. So when we first came, our heart was tender. And we love the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let that change. Don't, don't lose your desire for him. So as the time went on, the spirit caught Philip away and carried him off in the spirit and led him to a eunuch took him away from all those people in that revival, in that whole city, and took him to one man. I want y'all to know, people of God, that the Lord will leave a whole group of people and visit you personally. Can I have somebody to give him praise? Have anybody ever had a personal visit from him? Where he come in and visit you personally? Well, I want you to know that you need to take advantage of that time. If he come and visit you personally, you need to pay attention to him. Here this Ethiopian eunuch was out in the desert place and, and the Most High sent Philip there to talk to him and to explain to him about the word and, and what he was supposed to do. He, here he was reading the scripture and didn't understand what he's reading. Sometimes people try to save their self without the leading of someone that knows how to explain the scripture. That's why you got so many people that are twisted up. They're trying to understand the Bible for themselves and they're trying to carry the, the, their own way into the kingdom. But it's not going to work. The Bible says, if any man would come after me, let him do what? 
deny himself, take up his cross, follow me daily. Let me tell you, when the Lord come upon you like, like you need him to come upon you, it's going to change your life. Oh, I wish I had some help. The Bible said that Paul was going down the road to Damascus and the spirit shined out of heaven and it was so bright that it knocked him off of his donkey, knocked him down to the ground and, and, and he was blinded by the light. Sometimes people you need to, to take heed and, and let the Lord come in and shine the glorious light of the gospel into your life so that you can see that you need help from on high. Anybody in here need help? Ah, oh, hallelujah. See, if you, if you don't need help, he can't help you. But if you know you need help, he can help you. He knocked uh, Saul down off of his, his beast and then began to talk to him and tell him what he need because Saul had been killing up uh, the people of God, had been bringing them bound to Jerusalem putting them in prison, but now he's having an encounter with him. Uh, when we begin to look at this thing, at one time, we didn't believe like we believe today. One time we found, found fault in the people that was in the church. But look at you now, you have become a believer because you had a visitation in the spirit. I wish I had some help, somebody. He visited me one day and he opened up my understanding that I need to be saved. Hallelujah. Uh, I feel like talking to y'all a little bit. Uh, Saul was going down the road and the Bible said that the spirit of God shined down from heaven. A light so bright that it knocked him off of his donkey. And the Bible said in verse number four that he fell down to the earth and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Somebody had been finding fault in this way, finding all kind of reason not to believe, finding all kind of reason not to surrender your life. But today he's going to ask you a question. Hallelujah. Look at what the scriptures say. And he said, what will thou have me to do, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Yahweh whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the priest. The Lord trying to deal with you, and many times you're trying to run from it. You're trying to run from him and run to the, to the funny marijuana sticks. Where y'all at? Y'all don't want me to mess with that, but I'm messing with that. You run into them funny, funny cigarettes. You know, back in the day uh, when we were smoking that stuff, uh, it, it wasn't like it is today. You can pull up on beside somebody in your car with your windows roll up. And they got their windows roll up and the scent still come in and knock you off of what you trying. What is that? Way over in another car, and you can smell the fumes of that poison that they smoking. Where y'all at? Come on, give God praise. They're doing something to the marijuana young people. It's not the same as it used to be. Can somebody give God praise? It's not the same as it used to be. The stuff that they got today, uh, they're tainting it, and they're putting uh, uh, fentanyl, in the marijuana. Uh, do you know that fentanyl uh, can take your life? Just a, a small amount of it. You're hearing about a lot of people dying today. A lot of folk just leaving here because that, that stuff they're using is tainted with fentanyl. Y'all don't want to talk to me now because I'm, I'm dealing with what you love. But that stuff, you better get rid of it. Pour it out. Get rid of it. It costs too much anyway. Spending all your bill money trying to get high. Come on, give God praise. Saul said, what will you have me to do? The Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Then he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise. Somebody need to rise up right now. Somebody help me say, arise. You need to rise up 
and be a man. You need to rise up and be a woman. Rise! Get up away from around that table. Hallelujah, where all the, the cutting up is going on. Rise up! And pay attention. You, ain't, you don't know how many years you got left. Come on, give him praise, somebody. I say you don't know how many years you guys left. Things are happening so quickly. Every day you ought to be giving him praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for another, a new day. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you for a new day. Thank you for letting me wake up this morning. Thank you for being clothed in my right mind. Thank you for letting me give up all this stuff that's down here killing folk. The, the people don't have to, to kill one another. The drugs is doing it. You got gang violence as well as the drugs. That's killing folk. Where y'all at? I, I was at a funeral. We had it right here. It was a young lady, beautiful young lady. I knew her mother. My heart went out for her. This young lady had... He got killed or old O D'd off of some of that stuff I'm trying to tell you about. Beautiful young lady. You wouldn't even think she was off into that kind of stuff. And I looked at her mama and was praying for her. Lord help her. A beautiful young lady laying out, whole life gone. Because she want to have fun because she want to do her thing. You don't know when something's going to be tainted because the government is against you. The government don't love you. Where y'all at? I'm going to say this and I'm going to get ready to go. The reason why things are so messed up, the economy has turned upside down. We are baby boomers. You know, you're seeing more old folks today than you do young ones these days. The baby boomers had all the jobs. We, we, we was the one, we, a lot of us, we worked. We went to work. We, we made our living. Now many of the baby boomers are retiring. So before, you had the pyramid that was like this. Just giving you an example. The baby boomers was on the top working. Back in our day when we was working. Young people was up here. Now, the pyramid has flipped upside down. It's bottoms upwards now. All the baby boomers up here retiring. But a little few young people down on the bottom trying to work. But the people on the bottom are supposed to pay uh, the money for the folks on the top to be able to live. So now, they got to get rid of so many people so that we can still have money just like the economy is still the same. That's why you're seeing so many plans implemented to take folk out. They're funneling you into a system to help you to get up out of here. I don't hear nobody. Have you ever went somewhere and they said, we don't have enough workers. You're going to have to, you're gonna have to wait. Or, or we, we can't, your table won't be ready because we short on cooks. We short on waitresses. Have you ever experienced that? Because you, they don't have enough people. The young people are dying. Young people are taking too many drugs. L young people don't want to work because y'all ain't paying me enough money. I ain't working for that little money. They're quitting the job. And all the old folk is retired. Don't you know this thing going to crash in a minute? Where y'all at? See, when you start talking like this, people don't want to pay attention. They want to think of happy days. They want to think of, oh, that ain't, that ain't going to happen, but you better catch a hold to yourself. This world is wicked. You don't believe they want to get rid of you? Me and my brother was talking about the penal system, the, you know, the prison system. They start grooming young boys in public school for prison. They're grooming you to go to prison when you're in public school to try to get you where you won't exist, where you won't be out in population to get rid of you. But you want to believe that this government is on your side. They're full of sorcery. They're full of ways to try to steal your future from you. But we're here to try to shine the glorious light of the gospel into you so that you might have a future, 
so that you might be able to raise your children, so that you might be able to be sober in your mind to detect what's going on in this world. Because many times when you're so high and out of your mind, that's a way to keep you preoccupied. And by the time you sober up, it's too late. Come on, give them praise. Well, Pastor, why are you talking so much about folk getting high and stuff? Because you, you, don't, you see it more now than it was when I was out there trying to do it. We were just a few of us trying to do it, but everybody looked like they're crazy now. Come on, give God praise. You just got a few people that, that's sane and walking around here, ain't no alcoholic, ain't no uh, pothead or whatever they call it. They, they got a new name for it now. It's cannabis. You got cannabis candy. Come on, give God praise. You chewing a cannabis chewing gum. Giggling and chewing gum. <laughs> what you laughing at? Is this that's that gum you chewing? Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. You got cannabis everything. They putting that stuff in everything. Cannabis candy. Want a piece? <laughs> yeah, break me off a piece of that, baby. Both of y'all, y'all looking at each other cross eyes, man. Yeah, this show is good. No, come on, give God praise. Get rid of it. Let it go. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I want to see young men coming in, dressed right, walking right, talking right. You know, when, when you get yourself together, people notice you. I remember being a young man, when I come in, I wouldn't like everybody else. They paid attention to me more because I wasn't looking like everybody else and acting like, they pay attention, they give me the job. You, 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 when can you start? Come on in, start, start Monday. Give you the promotion because you ain't looking like everybody else is doing. You come in sober-minded. Looking straight, talking straight, know how to take an interview. You ain't looking down, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I could do that. No, you know how to talk on the interview. Talking intelligent. You start giving your life to him, you want to read a book. I remember when I first got saved, I got had a de de desire to read. I hadn't read it on no when. I still know how to read. <laughs> So I start reading. Start going to school. Come on, give God praise. Some of y'all, some you'll be surprised how many people have never read a whole book. Don't let that soak in for a minute. Ask yourself the question: when have you read a whole book from cover to cover? You got a lot of people ain't never read a whole book through. This is a listening society. Now you put the tape on so I can listen at it. I can listen at it, but you don't want to read it. If you want to hide something from Negroes, what you do? Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. I didn't even have to add on. Y'all knew what they said. That's the saying that they got. Put it in a book. But I'm going to let you know what it means. I'm going to tell you as best I can. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to restore your future. I don't want to see you uh, the same way that you are now and you 50 years old and you ain't you still sagging. You still got your head, hat turned backwards 50 years old. I'm going to give God praise. I wish I had some help, somebody. Where y'all at? What kind of plans you got for your future? Are you planning your future? Are you trying to take some necessary steps so that you can be protected? Because it ain't like it was when we was coming up. They're out to get you today. They're, they, they're out to get you with everything. They'll get you with that. Come on, give God praise. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Where you at? 
Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for these young men. I got to preach like this for y'all. I got to let y'all know what time it is because I want, I want to see y'all coming up prosperous. I want to see you with your own business. I want to see you pulling up in your nice car, your pickup truck or your Jeep. I don't want to have to go out and you out under the hood with a hammer trying to get the car started. Come on, give him praise. I want him to bless you. You could be blessed. Come on, give God glory. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That's all right. That's all right. But sorcery is taking over our generation. Our young generation is being overtaken by the spirit of sorcery. Sorcery has to do with drugs. Pharmacia. Pharmacy comes from pharmacia. So that's why they are trying to illegalize uh, the weed now, give it a, a, a cute little name, but that's sorcery. That's pharmacia that they're using to keep you in the dark to keep you from paying attention, to keep you from being alert and alarmed. So don't be fooled by that. It's time for us to be sober. It's time for us to know what's going on. Look at you, you looking at me straight. I ain't playing. I ain't got no time to be playing with you. Somebody coming in to do something crooked, you, you up on it. Check them out, man, what they doing. Be aware of your surroundings. Nobody sneaking up on me. What you doing? Come on, give God praise. Get on away from back from behind me. What you stepping behind me for? Get out in the front of me. You have to sometimes face this stuff head on because these folks ain't playing out here. They trying to be slick. All you look at the shorts, and a lot of times you all, all you see is us killing, tow, 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 running. On shorts, if you if you like that, that's what most of your shorts gonna find all the shooting and all, you looking at all killings in your shorts over and over and over. Am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? So, people of God, let me tell you this: if you say, stay saved. If you not saved, get saved. I don't want to preach an unnecessary funeral. Don't play with y'all. Don't play with him. Be serious about him. Do y'all hear me? When people play with him, sometimes he have to show that he ain't playing. And do something that will baffle the minds of the people. So don't play with him. He's a consuming fire. He'll do you good, and then he'll turn around and do you hurt when you just keep on getting out of line. And he'll get me for not telling you and warning you. I've seen another scripture, but I ain't got time to get it. Y'all don't want me to get it, do you? <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's made me a watchman. And I got to warn you before the trouble strike. If I see trouble coming and don't warn you, he's going to get me. Your blood going to be required at my hand. But if I warn you and you take heed, both of us going to be happy. But if I warn you and you don't take heed, your blood is on your hand. I done preached a many a time to people and uh, some listened and some didn't. Come on, somebody. Let me, let me slow down and get ready to stop. Let me come on in for a landing because sorcery is real. So don't be fooled because it's real. That's why I'm telling you, because it's real. It caused Saul, King Saul, to
to lose his spot because he consulted from the witch of Endor. And it disqualified him. So that spirit is growing. It's getting stronger. So we as a people, we got to exemplify holiness and righteousness. Some of the rap music that you listen to with the beat. Come from straight from the jungle. Straight from the witch doctor. They be out there dig, dancing. Be out there dancing. Where do you think they got their dance from? They got dancing where they moving up. That's, that's got some little witchery in it. These little wicked dances they doing it. And you making beats. You get caught up in it. People spend eight hours making beats. Can't spend eight minutes listening at the word of God. Come on, give them praise. I'm fishing for the young people. I want you to be saved. When this stuff strike, I want you to know Bishop Coleman was talking about that. He sure was right. I'm going to take heed. I'm going to surrender my life to him. Look at our sister Cassandra. She gone now. And all of us miss her because she was faithful. Come on, give him praise. I'm going to miss her going out of town with us. She used to ride with us. We laughing and talking on the road. I can't do that no more. She's gone. So that's why I'm trying to appeal to you. Surrender your life to him. You don't know where death is. Life is uncertain, but death is sure. It's going to happen. So if I got to leave here, let me leave in the arms Oh, the most high. Come on, somebody. Give him praise. Hallelujah. All right, that's all I have today. I, I just wanted to talk about how Simon, the sorcerer, got baptized, but it didn't stick. 